Hey, and the hands matter to raise your hand. I've been staring at this all day and I don't know what it means. I've been thinking a lot about Subnautica recently. Man, water is scary. Wait. Oh my god. This is the ocean. I'm an educational channel now. Now imagine the ocean, but scary. Nothing changed, dupes. Uh, imagine the ocean, but there's horrific creatures in there. Damn it. Okay, um, imagine the ocean, but there's a lot we don't know about it. Okay, imagine the ocean, but it's named Subnautica. Are you fucking kidding me? Subnautica is a nice, calm, and serene ocean survival experience. Just kidding, dumbass. Subnautica is actually the, uh, scariest game I've ever played. You probably already know that Subnautica is basically a horror game in disguise. This is something that people have been saying since the game went into early access all those years ago. But, as I've been replaying it recently, I've come to find out that the game is genuinely the most terrifying experience I've ever had in gaming. I mean, these exist, how could it not be? I wonder how other horror fans are gonna take that. Hello? Actually, Silent Hill 2 is the scariest game ever made. I am going to skin you alive. Now, I'm not gonna go too in-depth on the story of Subnautica, as that's just not what this video is for. But for those who don't really know what Subnautica is, first, get out of here! Play the goddamn game. But if you can or don't want to, this section will be a brief overview of the gameplay and the story. In Subnautica, you crash land on an alien planet that's just basically a giant ocean, and your goal is to survive and later cure yourself and the rest of the planet. Subnautica is a survival game, so that means you'll have to keep track of hunger and thirst if you're playing on the normal survival mode, but there is a freedom mode that is basically just Subnautica, but no hunger or thirst. You have to collect materials, craft shit, and above all, survive while basically everything wants to kill you. It's a good life lesson. It's a lovely day out here. Oh my god! I am going to eat you! The story isn't really outright told to you as the same with a lot of survival games, and there's also a lot of different stories going on. You have the Degasi survivors, the Altera story, the Aurora survivors who did not survive for very long, but died after the crash, but hey, they survived the crash. The precursors, the ecosystem around you, and the virus. Probably none of that made any sense if you haven't played Subnautica, so play the fucking game! The game revolves mainly around the precursors, who are aliens that used to live on the planet, and the virus, which is what your central objective is. After exploring the Aurora, which is the ship you are a part of that crashed, you get infected by these stupid fucking leeches, and now you have to find a cure or else you can't escape as this big fucking gun will shoot you down. And throughout your journey, a creature known as the Sea Emperor communicates with you, telling you that they'll help you. So once you find the Sea Emperor, you have to make hatching enzymes for their kids, who then hatch and spew the enzyme needed to cure you and the planet everywhere. And then the Sea Emperor dies. You disable the gun, build a huge ass rocket that will actually take forever because you have to get a billion materials for it, and then you leave, and the Sea Emperor talks to you again. Are we actually sure the Sea Emperor is communicating with us, or are we just insane? But why is Subnautica so scary? It's definitely a very, very, very complicated answer. It plays into like every single phobia ever. Subnautica plays into a lot of phobias. There's obviously the fear of the ocean and the fear of water, but also the fear of the dark, fear of bacteria and infection, fear of injection, fear of tight spaces, fear of open spaces, fear of whatever the fuck that is, fear of holes, fear of the unknown, fear of spiders, fear of caves, fear of flying, fear of driving, fear of death and pain, fear of large things, fear of isolation or being alone, fear of small things, the fear of dentists. You get the idea, okay? Some of those might be a little nitpicky, like the fear of flying, you literally only do it in the ending of the game, but a lot of them are pretty prevalent throughout the entire experience. But considering I just listed off 8,000 phobias, let's talk about some of the big ones. Is there a word for the fear of public bathrooms? Because I have that. Well, I wonder how this could scare people who are scared of water. Wait. How could it? Subnautica is literally a game where you spend 98% of your time in water. Of course it'll scare people with hydrophobia. But even for people who don't have hydrophobia, it can still scare you. In Subnautica, you go deep down. DEEP down. Like 1600 meters down. That's scary enough. But looking down beneath you and seeing absolutely nothing or going into a seamoth in an area where you can't even see the ground for a few seconds is horrifying. This mainly ties in with a certain fear, the fear of dentists, that we'll talk about later. 
but being that far down, in a place that you don't know much about, is so unnerving. This one can be a little less common, but especially at night and in later areas, the game gets dark as fuck. And similar to what I said for the fear of water, this just makes the game so much more unnerving, knowing that this could just be anywhere. This game is already terrifying with the things I've mentioned so far, but knowing that you are most likely the only person who survived the Aurora crash, or at least is still alive from the crash and didn't meet a different fate, makes it even scarier. There is no one to help you. And knowing that whatever sent this isn't something that you know, These don't contradict themselves at all! Looking below you and seeing nothing but a wide, open void is horrifying. Likewise, going into a large, open area like the dunes is horrifying, knowing that the monsters could be anywhere and everywhere, and the sounds you hear around you don't ease your fear at all. Tight space-wise, a big part of the survival aspect of Subnautica is finding materials like titanium, diamond, ruby, lithium, etc. A lot of these materials are more abundant in caves, or more likely to be found at all in caves. In their caves, you're stuck in a small area finding materials, not knowing if something could be in there with you, and also if you're running low on oxygen, who knows if you'll get out in time. So bring a fucking CMOP. You knew I was gonna talk about this. I mean, Subnautica's horror and the fear of the unknown go hand in hand, just like how nobody knows of the many Geneva Convention violations I've done, and also the silencing of the evidence. What? I didn't say anything. This is a topic that's been done to death, but I'd be doing this game a disservice by not mentioning it in a video where I talk about how scary it is. The fear of the unknown is a very instinctual fear for people. It's something a large majority of people have, and it's a big reason for a lot of the other fears we have. A lot of people are scared of the ocean because we don't know what the fuck is in that place. A lot of people are scared of the dark because they can't see anything and don't know what's around them and what could possibly hurt them. A lot of people are scared of tight spaces because they don't know if something could happen in those spaces and if, if they could get out in time. People are scared of open spaces because they don't know what's there and what could be there. It's People are scared of dentists because they're scared of dentists. The fear of the unknown is a very natural thing for people to have, like how I'm scared of whatever the fuck is in my closet. I haven't actually changed my clothes in years. Every video I just spray paint my clothes different colors. But this fear is something Subnautica plays directly into. By complete accident. Oh yeah, I guess I should mention that Subnautica was never supposed to be a horror game. So then we get games that are supposed to be horror games that are like this. Subnautica's use of the fear of the unknown is done to fucking perfection. That even though I've played and beaten this game multiple times and seen almost everything it has to offer, I am still scared out of my mind when I play it again. No matter how many times I play this game, going into the deep sea and not fully knowing what I'm in for, even though I've played the game for over 50 hours, is still one of the most terrifying things I've ever experienced in gaming. And one of the reasons for this was explained really well by the Stellar J in his indie horror video. Once you know the monsters can be anywhere, you imagine they're everywhere. Subnautica nails the fear of the unknown, completely accidentally. The devs have come out and said that the game was never intended to be scary and was just supposed to be a nice, calm survival experience. But that fear of the unknown, even in early versions of the game, was something a lot of people talked about. Now whether the game was intended to be scary when that fear of the unknown topic about this game started gaining traction is beyond me, but it did add this after the game started gaining a lot of traction. But the fact that even in its early stages, Subnautica pulled off horror so well as a byproduct of its fucking setting is so incredible. But speaking of this, I'm talking about psychological horror this entire time and I've barely talked about the Leviathans who have become such iconic gaming enemies. So now I'm gonna do that. You know, they could have just done this. They're scary now. But instead they did this. Even though the biggest reason for why I think Subnautica is so scary is its use of psychological torment, that doesn't mean its use of more attacks on the senses aren't scary at all either. Reapers are the first aggressive leviathans you'll most likely encounter. They're big and they fucking hate you. Hearing the roar and turning around to see them chasing right after you turns what could be a serene swimming experience into one of the most intense things you'll ever experience. And then there's I the have ghost angel leviathan. singing in my ears. What the fuck is that? Sea dragons are big. 
They breathe fucking fire underwater. I find sea dragons to be a little less scary than the others. More of the times when I see a sea dragon, I'm more like, whoa, that thing is fucking cool and not, oh, Jesus. They are still pretty scary though. Even the more passive leviathans are still unnerving to an extent. The first leviathan you'll probably see in Subnautica is the reef back in. When you hear it and see it for the first time, you'll probably shit yourself. I know because the shit from that day is still in my pants. After all, I can't change my clothes since... <sighs> but reef packs don't want anything to do with you and are just living their lives. So after a while, you're not really scared of them anymore. But for me, even though I knew they were friendly, there was still something so unnerving about being near them with how big they are. Same with sea treaders, I wasn't that scared when I first saw them because I didn't really expect them to hurt me at all, but when I'm down at the seafloor near them, there's something that makes me really uncomfortable when I'm around them. Sea Emperor wise, this thing is fucking massive, it can crush me in an instant. And when it first spoke to me in my playthrough and I had no idea what it was, it freaked me the fuck out. Now I know she can't hurt me and she doesn't scare me anymore, but now I'm just sad when I see her. Reminded of how I literally cried when she died in my first playthrough. It's not even just the leviathans that freak me out in this game. My first experiences with enemies like crab squids, warpers, and stalkers were really scary because I had no idea what they were. And now, crab squids and warpers still scare me. Like, uh, wh 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 what is this? This thing is an abomination. Not stalkers though, they're just kind of annoying. But even though the leviathans are terrifying creatures up close, my scariest experiences with them come back to the whole psychological horror thing. This might as well just be a video about psychological horror. Seeing the leviathans in the distance, hearing the sounds they make, and just wondering if they're gonna come after you is genuinely terrifying. That fear is your mind doing the work for you, because the leviathans aren't even doing anything, but you are still scared. And knowing that if you can hear the reaper's roar means that it knows where you are, it's just... If you ever decide to make a list of the scariest enemies in gaming, don't overlook Subnautica. Because my experiences with Reapers and Ghosts have been fucking dramatic. Hell, the phrases, detecting multiple Leviathan-class lifeforms in the region, and warning, entering ecological dead zone have scarred me. <laughs> detecting multiple Leviathan-class lifeforms in the region. Are you certain whatever you're doing is worth it? And speaking of the dead zone, my first experience with it is actually a perfect example for what I've been talking about in this entire video. I heard my PDA say, Warning, entering ecological dead zone. Adding report to databank. And even though I had no idea what the dead zone was, I instantly got chills. But because I'm stupid, I went further in, and it got dark, and I didn't know what was about to happen. That is some perfect psychological horror. And then the jump scare cherry on top was when a fucking ghost leviathan spawned on top of me. So thank you, Subnautica. I am not traumatized. But I'm not even kidding that when I hear the words dead zone, I get fucking chills because of Subnautica. I think I found it. I think I found the dead zone. Welp. It's been nice knowing ya. <gasps> I can't. I can't. I'm genuinely fucking scared. Oh no. That is definitely the dead zone. I... Uh, but I, I have to do it for the footage. Um... You know what, I'm gonna get some happy music. Alright, welcome back to Subnautica. I'm gonna save, um... Fuck my life. Fuck. I can't do it. Ah! Go back! Back! God! I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm done, I'm, 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 I'm fucking done, I'm done, I'm done, I, no, 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 I, I have like actual PTSD from the ecological dead zone, I can't do it. Aren't you glad that I was playing that music for this? I can't really think of many games that have done that to me, ever. This game is fantastic. I think I made my point pretty clear in this video. I genuinely think that Subnautica is the scariest game ever made. No matter how much time I spend in that game, no matter how many times I replay it, it never ceases to terrify me. Feeling so small in a world that large and not knowing what waits in the dark is uniquely horrifying. And things like this have cemented Subnautica as one of my favorite games of all time. I put it as like my fourth favorite game ever made, but that spot is shared with another horror game, one that I consider to be the best, up there with Subnautica. 
and that game is... He's just been up there for like the past 15 minutes. Hey, they wanna be my pet. My dog could use a friend. I'll take it as a yes.